vlogs in my vintage iFi channel. Not always going to be about vintage, I will wander on to other bits and pieces, some gadgets and bits and pieces you can add to it, uh, and reviews, tips and whatever. It could be a general thing, but I kind of kept it at vintage because that's probably the majority of the stuff. So, um, yeah, if you haven't subscribed yet, maybe please consider that because it helps me um, get more views, obviously, and it gets me motivated to get more stuff out there, even though I've, got, I've still got tons of stuff to put on there, to be honest with you. Um, today, I'm going to be talking about a JPW mini monitor speaker. My thoughts and review on this speaker, and I will be comparing it to the Wolfdale 9.0 and a more than short 10 that I've got. So, it uh, kind of gives you some idea how it sits amongst them. And when I get some more bookshelf speakers, I will uh, do a, you know, a bigger review. I'll put them all together and go from top to bottom, so to speak. Kind of do a league table or something like that. Uh, but we'll wait till then anyway. Um, bookshelves are quite a popular speaker. Uh, seems to get um, the most views on my channel and also um, quite popular on eBay and places like that. You know, you see them being sold all the time, all the time because they're a nice compact speaker. Can, you know, find an easy room for them or whatever. If you've got a small room, they're brilliant, like kind of thing, on a shelf or whatever like that. Or just even on the tabletop or something like that. You know, I mean, they don't take up a big footprint. And you can get, you know, a good sound. Now, obviously, you can pay big money for a bookshelf, but, you know, you still get a good sound out of these little speakers. So, um, anyway, before I um, give a the proper review of it, I'm going to just show you inside quickly, because I do like taking these apart if I can. Obviously, some of them I can't, because the screws are concealed or just the way they're made. But if I'm getting into it, I like to have a look. kind of gives you a general idea of um, maybe how these, these were made kind of thing. So anyway, I've took it apart there. As you can see, there's inside, that's the crossover. And there's a little bit of wall, not much padding inside. I don't know how much, much dampening inside at all. I was expecting a bit more, to be honest with you, but there weren't a lot in there. Uh, so that's that. Uh, and if, if I just stay there, if you just see these screws here, these are screws here, which are a little bit on the shabby side, really, but I suppose what do you expect for a cheap speaker? Uh, they're coming through from the back plate. Uh, the back plate there, um, that's where the screws are poking through. So I'll just show you a bit more inside there. There's the sealant going all the way around at the back. This is keeping it airtight because these are a sealed unit. These are no ports on these at all. These are sealed. Come back out. There's the driver speaker. As you can see, the wires are actually soldered to the driver. So it's a good solid contact. What I did notice though, it's got a lot of scratches. I mean, I haven't done this and I doubt if anyone else has took it apart. A lot of scratches in the back of this uh, driver. You know, it's been scraped along different places. Now I've heard these are made in Pentonville and Dartmoor in the UK. These are a British speaker. Um, whether that's true or not, you know, prison rehabilitation, whatever it's called, um, you know, whether they're scraping along, you can imagine them scraping and pushing to each other like along this bench or whatever and picking up these marks. So maybe that, that, that's what it is, I don't know. Uh, there's, the, there's the tweeter there, and that's got the wire soldered as well, as you can see, normal kind of tweeter for these uh, speakers. Uh, if I just show you this picture here, this is the veneer that's kind of started to crumb, you know, kind of crease a bit, crumble, crease, I would have said, uh, near where the screw holes are, um, we do the tweeter up, you know, I mean, maybe the tightness of the tweeter or, you know, or whatever, the veneer's just stretched a little bit, but I just thought I'd show you that. Uh, well, that's so much if you've got the grills, you're probably going to leave the grills on maybe so you wouldn't notice that, but, you know, if you're a bit fussy or whatever, you know, just look out for that. I've seen quite a few on eBay and places like that, not just this model, but other models of different makes and whatever, where this can happen, you know, just something to look out for, maybe zoom in on the pictures before you buy it, if, you know, if you're really fussed about that. Okay, so if we come back to me, if I just spin it round there like that, uh, this is the back. Uh, it's a mini monitor, as you can see. Now, it's 6 ohms, this speaker. This is the only 6 ohm speaker I've got at the moment. Uh, power and it is 70 watts, and 87 dB is the sensitivity. So it's the least sensitive I've got, but I've tried it with a 7 watt amp, I think a 12 watt amp, I mean 20 watt amp. I've tried it with a few different amps anyway, but yeah, they, you know, I'm, I know them for a fact. And they sounded fine, you know, they weren't like I couldn't hear them or nothing, you know what I mean? And I didn't really, I don't think I really turned the volume up anymore, to be honest with you, you know, they sounded fine. So that's the back normal screw terminals there. And this is the screws that are poking through. They actually go, and like I say, just poke through the enclosure the other side. What I will say, I did, I've mentioned it before, is even on these, I haven't come across a speaker yet that I've bought. That I, wanted, I didn't have to do one of these screws up. You know, one of these screws is loose. I think on one of them, one of them wasn't on the other two. And I was surprised on one of them how loose it was. And I thinking, how can it get that loose? You know, maybe the sound vibrations of it, you know, over time. Uh, but then again, it could be like when they're making it in the manufacturers, like the bloke was doing the bloke was in charge of doing the screws up. You know, that I do, and one goes through, a couple go through. Don't do it as tight as possible. Um, so yeah, definitely look out for that. You know, check all these screws, do them as tight as you possibly can, but don't go too mad because you're screwing into wood here, and this is like this type chipboard kind of wood, 
and if you go too far it loses grip and you'll be forever turning it then you probably have to look around for a bigger thread screw to get the grip back again so yeah don't go too mad but do um, do them up as tight as possible okay so that's that um, i put them all in the short tent at the back now uh, i've had the driver in and out of that like a yo-yo to be honest with you i've been mucking about with um one of my uh Wolfdale 90 speakers with the driver anyway it's back in there at the moment i'll be doing testing with that comparing them again but i know what they sound like anyway these two but uh, it's nice to have the three of them together switching about and listening to the differences gives you like a good idea you know how different they are though so when i usually connect these up to an amp now after just connecting up to what well, the first amp but even connect up to a couple of amps you kind of you know how they're going to sound like you know what i mean you know how they're going to sound okay um and how, how, how did they sound then right okay so if we start off um, we'll start off with a bass i think even though this is not ported now i have these speakers on a shelf uh downstairs and and up here i've got another shelf there as well uh and i use it you know on a shelf they're going to be about three or four inches from the back obviously this gives a bit more bass than having them in the middle of the room on a stand or whatever and these are quite basic for what they are these are quite basic like you know they're more basic than the uh, modern short tens I would say, you know, they're a little bit bass, a little bit bass forward, like, but nowhere near as bass forward as this, you know what I mean? They may be a bit, where the more short tens are more of a relaxed bass, and more of a relaxed speaker, really. These are more of a lively speaker. These are quite lively speaker. And these ones here, I just, I just found them dull, like, you know what I mean? They're, they're dull speakers, to be honest with you. But um, that's my opinion, you know, I'm not, not, not disregarding anyone that's bought these or anything, but if you have, you know, maybe look around and try out another speaker, like, you know what I mean? I think you'd be surprised. And, you know, you can get something better. Like, you think, oh, this sounds a lot better than this did. You know, it's only my opinion. This is, this is a nice looking speaker, but that, that's about it for me. Like, you with me? So it gets good reviews. So there you go. I you know, sometimes I wonder how, but there you go. Okay, coming back to this. Like I say, this is, uh, what was you talking about? The bass. Yeah, the bass. The bass is nice. It's got quite a bit of bass for where it is. Like I say, move it into the middle of the room. Obviously, you're going to lose that bass. And I did read a few articles where they, you know, say put a subwoofer with it and that. It depends how low you want to go with a bass, you know what I mean? It depends how big your room is as well. But, you know, as long as it ain't too big. My mine's not uh, seven seven yards by three and a half. And this speaker's too small for it, to be honest with you. It's all right if you're down the end with it. You know, if you're down the end of the room with this speaker, you're probably going to be okay, like, you know what I mean? But for a small bedroom or small room like this, this is, this is fine, you know what I mean? Something like this is ideal, really is. Um... Yeah, so the base the base is not as defined. It's it's, it's more base to it, but it's not as defined. It's a bit lower than the base, but it's not as defined as it is on the uh, Morden Short Ten. You know what I mean? You get, you know when you're hitting the bass drum and that. You, you on the Morden Short Ten, you, you you can feel like it's hitting a bass. You, you can imagine that bass drum, so to speak, where you can't you know it's not so defined as it is. This speaker isn't as defined as it is on that Morden Short Ten, and this here. Oh, it's just a muffled kind of bass. You miss. It's so forward. It's it's just you know they put emphasizing that bass. They emphasize that bass because it's a small speaker. That it's just not you know it's, it's no definition to it. It's, it's just a muffled kind of bass on that one. I mean I've got a review on the uh, on here. So if you want to go back and have a actually look at the review of that speaker and what I actually thought would be a bit more detail maybe. Okay. Um, Yes, like I say, the bass and the snare sounded all right, the piano sounded all right, the vocals sounded fine, like, it all sounded nice and that, you know what I mean? It, you know, for what it is, it sounded quite, you know, it's quite nice, it's all, all that. Um, let's have a look now. Now, coming to the treble now. Now, I found the treble right, it's quite, you know, it's quite bright, it's quite detailed, the treble is detailed, but it can be a bit harsh, you know what I mean? The treble is a bit harsh. I found, the, you know, the eyes a bit harsh compared with the Morning Short 10. The, the Morning Short 10 was, like I say, more refined, more of a laid back sound. This was, a, so, you know, you're getting a bit more bass, but you're losing the detail. You're getting a bit more treble than that, maybe, uh, but it's more harsher. You know what I mean? So this is the kind of comparison between them two. Um, yeah, I've got here, the bass is not as smooth as the movement short tens, which is, which is right. Yeah, the vocals sounded fine, piano, drums, they all sounded fine. Just that it was a bit more defined than them more than short tens. I mean, it's not a million miles out, but it's still like just a little bit better on them and um, there's nowhere near as muffled as it is you know is on there there you go so yeah so really like you know if i was just trying to sum this up uh and put it into some kind of respective um it's a good little speaker you're going to pay 30 maybe 40 pound including postage you know you don't want to pay much more than that because obviously you can wander onto other other speakers if one of these come up cheap it's definitely worth getting i think it's a lively sound it's, you know it's a quite a big sound for a small speaker it's quite a big you know involving sound you know, I mean, it's more involving than the um, modern short 10, like I say, it's more of a relaxed, laid back sound, but this is more forward, you know, in your face kind of sound, lively, you know what I mean? Maybe a bit more of a party sound than the um, modern short 10s. I mean, I definitely disregard this speaker, you know, I, 
if you see this and this, we'll get this one, you know what I mean, definitely, without a doubt, you know what I mean, definitely get this one. And that's my opinion, you know, obviously it's up to you. Uh, so yeah, if I was, at the moment, I'd say I want to get some speakers and do a complete rating, but where would I put this in between the, you know, these three speakers, how would this one sit, you know, give you a bit more of an idea maybe. This would be down the, the bottom end, like this is down the bottom end. This would be at the top end at the moment, you know what I mean? You know, considering, you know, don't forget, these are, these are cheap speakers, like 40 pound each, so to speak, somewhere around there. These are not going to be unbelievably brilliant. I mean, they bring out speakers of five and six hundred pound and thousand pound bookshelf speakers, and even some of them, you know, people will call them absolutely brilliant, but they're obviously going to be a lot better than these. You know, you get what you pay for, kind of thing. And don't forget, these these are when they come out eighty pound each. They're in that kind of bracket, like you with me, but they're still, you know, just get some good sounds out of them. Don't get me wrong. So yeah, this is down the bottom. That'd be say position. You know, if you've done one, two, three, four, so or five or something. That'd be in position five, that'd be in position one. This would be four, you know what I mean? It'd be up against that end, you know, it'd be sitting next to this one, and it'd be nowhere near down this end with this one, you know what I mean? If I was to put five of them together, so to speak, this would be in position four. It'd be pretty, you know, it'd be sitting next to that one there, you know, the more than short ten. Not like I say, not quite as defined, but still okay, you know what I mean? Still still good little speaker for what it is. So yeah, yeah, so, um, you know, I'll definitely recommend it. Let's put it that way, you know what I mean? For the money you're going to pay for it, we'll go overboard, we'll pay an 80 and 100 pound one, that's for certain, because I think you're going to get a better speaker. But for that kind of money, if you want to outlay that kind of money, 30, 40 pound, and if you're lucky enough to maybe get one in a charity shop or something like that, even cheaper, then great, you know what I mean? Definitely pick it up. So that's it. So Okay, so I'll say thanks for watching, and I'll see you all soon.